I tell you the truth. You can turn things around. I want to quickly go into the word of the Lord. I want to appreciate this man of God for allowing me to come and to share with all of you and uh, to hear from the Lord. Reverend, I do want to take you up on that little stool piece. If, if, they, if they got it, uh, somebody will get it, won't they? Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm just a Southern girl. You know, a lot of my friends say when the world seems to misunderstand me, they go, they just don't know you. There are some personal things they don't need to know. They should be able to trust the Holy Spirit and go on. I want to encourage um, all of you who are, can you come a little closer? <laughs> can y'all still see and hear me? Okay, cool. I didn't want to uh, stand up all that time. These heels are a little low, but I got something to say, and I need to be able to sit and look at some of y'all. And I just want to say, I mean everything that God is about to say. If God says it, I approve it. It's God's message, not my own. We have to obey the Lord. And sometimes, telling the truth, most times, you know, telling the truth becomes a bit uncomfortable for most. If I were you in this last hour, I would embrace truth as much as I possibly could. Even if it offends, if there's something in you that the truth offends, you should put that under the microscope and say, Lord, please search me when you find anything that should not be. Can I tell all of us today, just know this is not a y'all gospel, it's an us gospel, that as I preach this word, know that I had to spend time with it first. And uh, there's no way that I can deliver it with understanding until I get it first and with conviction unless I get it first. I love the Lord's people and that's one of the attacks that the enemy has had against me is to make it seem as if I don't love God's people. In the recent times uh, I had to uh, slightly kindly rebuke a young lady uh, who was in the service and she was not attentive while service was going on. Prophets can be easily distracted because we hear and see things that most people don't hear and see. And sometimes we've seen it three weeks before the actuality of it. And so now that we're in it, we surely don't want the enemy to distract because God has shown us what the end result is. So therefore, when the enemy tries something, you cannot be kind because to the carnal, all things are carnal. And there are some things you just got to deal with in a way that makes people understand because when people are not spiritual, they don't understand a spiritual thing. I I didn't have time to go into tongues to tell the woman that her singing was distracting the moment. There were people standing in front of me with their hands lifted, worshiping and praising God. And I was singing, thank you, Lord. So much had gone on in the service long before that. And right when we got there, somehow or another, her little box of singing came on, only to later find out that she and some of the other family members, so I've heard, I don't know, I never met her. Uh, before until that night that she and her family are known for being disruptive and see while the world was ready to ridicule me saying she don't want nobody singing with her it was a public song you should be able to sing in the house of God carnal immature people who are looking to find fault and uh, so that's the kind of stuff you have to just kind of see and don't see I've learned oh I feel like running the Holy Ghost get on you I feel like running the Lord has allowed me now to graduate and mature that when I hear negativity, you know what I hear it saying to me? Help. See, I don't read words of ridicule as words of ridicule. It screams to me, help me. So I can't be mad. Even if you stood, sister, anybody that stood to say, I was one of the ones that typed something against you. I didn't like how you did so and so. I would embrace you and hug you and love on you. Not to make you be my friend, but to try to understand what's causing you to miss the mark. I'm not judging you. I'm observing your inconsistencies of holiness. Because holiness knows holiness. When you live in carnality, you're going to hear all things carnal. To the carnal, all things are carnal. And to the spiritual, all things are spiritual. And so, come to find out that she and her family are disruptive people and have had to be escorted out of places and all that type of thing. But she was just one of the many people. And uh, it was a distraction to the atmosphere. And uh, I was trying to be nice and tell them, honey, you got a mask on, let it work for you. My God, pull it tighter. Do something to muffle whatever that is coming out of you because it's not helping the atmosphere and your distraction. So hush. You know, when I was growing up, the older saints, they were not that kind. They told you to shut up and get out. Don't say another word and call you out your name and have somebody escort you out. And the church would go up in a blaze. But we've come now to an hour that wants to be controlled by feelings. People are trying to give instruction have not lived long enough to even spell it right. And we are bowing to Baal. Come on, church. And that's why if you're going to be attached to a prophet, now I got to talk to the people I came for. 
If you're going to be attached to a prophet, you got to learn to teach yourself how to hear, see, and understand at a different type of level. And not walk that you are self-judging yourself because you don't measure up. No, if you play it safe, you never try to compare yourself to the prophetic. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. If you're prophetic, be prophetic. The prophets know prophets. But when you're not a prophet and you know you don't walk in that type of anointing and you begin to compare who you think you are or think you should be to that, there becomes dissension and then you get an attitude and you go to showing up to church late and then you go to trying to research stuff and then you try to fight it. Don't you understand that when you fight against whatever belongs to God, God will replace it ten times better than what you thought you could bring to the table? We're in an hour now that God is eliminating these so-called pseudo worship people spot holders let me get into the word but the lord ain't studying y'all y'all better grow up and get out of the way before the lord silences you in a way that you never thought that he would this is an hour that god is bringing obedient people to the front because it's necessary for the obedient to be heard and he's bringing the trusted to the, to the front. Who are the trusted? The ones who can go through and still smile. The ones who can be talked about and still be okay. The ones who knows that you lied on them and still hug you when they see you and not be a hypocrite. Don't mind telling you, I know you don't like me. I didn't hear that you didn't. I discern that you don't like me. Instead of me telling you, stay as you are, I pray that you don't remain that way. Just know it doesn't bother me. Because it's like you're drinking poison waiting on me to die. But I'd rather you be healed, be delivered and be set free I don't mean any harm I'm just not thinking about you and I wish you would grow up and grow up out of that because I'm not paying you any mind okay let's go to the scripture the power of godly practice say the power of godly practices say it again the power of godly practices what does y'all shirt say uh, so I'm going to be looking at all you consortium wearers Especially, let me tell you why. You all have one of the, the greatest opportunities, but also a very dangerous place to live in. Because you are not going to be able to act like you're going along. It cannot be an act. Oh, hallelujah to God. Because you will get your life and your soul in trouble if you do that. It will be very dangerous for you to try to walk close to the fire and not every once in a while enjoy your burn. See, people who get burned by the fire and don't learn how to enjoy it, they're not ready to grow into what they think they are. You got to learn how to take a rebuke and say thank you. When you know you're ready for the next level is when you can be rebuked and don't stay home for a week lying on a so-called, acting like something wrong. You, what is wrong? Hey, you got to grow up. Somebody shout, grow up, grow up. Our baby in the Lord was standing here a few minutes ago, the young man that was pushing the service along. He said, mighty fortress is our God. My mother used to sing that song, a song that had that line in it. But I went on to the next slide. It's a bulwark. Yeah. See, never fail it. That, that means a fortified wall. Uh, uh, God is a protection that never fails. That's why obedient people should never be afraid to say what God says. Because God's protection that never fails is always around you, always with you, always going to comfort you. He's going to always give you what you need. That's why you can't do this for all the amens of people. Because people will change on you. Are you kidding me? They hear something about you. And the last Sunday when they was having to be packed out while you were singing baby they'll walk out while you're singing the next Sunday because they heard something about you and their behavior acts that way because they want to believe what they heard when people respond to what they've heard and they didn't find out themselves they wanted to believe it and you can never ignore that posture you got to call it on the carpet even if it's people you love and say hey 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 your attitude changed your spirit changed toward me I picked up on it I love you I just want to make sure I'm safe around you because I don't need to be around hypocrites because I've worked too hard to become better for God and I love you too much because you are a distraction from to my heart and I just need you to be honest with me because I already see the truth but if you tell me the truth we can get along because I'm going to respond according to what I'm discerning about you anyway so it's a, see that's the kind of thing the devil doesn't want us to get into you I'm shy I don't really speak up no when you when you are representative of the Lord Jesus Christ you don't matter 
the, the, the you of you, it, it, it matters less and less and less to go ahead and do what God would have of you to do. And so, and the open heaven is giving us passage to uncharted favor. I'm, I'm going to be very prophetic. I'm going to be very direct. As I was reading Joshua 3, the sense what the Lord would have me to say concerning crossing over into this next place, the Lord brought me to talk about the power of godly practices. You know, a lot of instruction was given to Israel. A lot of instructions. Defined, detailed instructions. <laughs> How many of y'all been in church over 10 years? Wave your hand at me. Okay. All right. How about over 20 years you've been closing in the church? Okay. Listen, the spotlight is on you. Okay, for better behavior as unto the Lord. The reason I say better behavior because the kingdom has not moved in, um, in, in, in a rhythm that it should because there are not a lot of people who are cooperative with the things of God. We are distracted by flamboyance in the church. Anything that looks like it deserves a hand clap. You could just go along to get along. But I don't believe in bearing false witness. If I don't sense the raw anointing purity of God's spirit, I'm not going to bear false witness. Like, oh, she's so arrogant. No, I'm careful. I just don't want to say amen to what God is not amen. I don't want to jump up on my feet, hollering, screaming, dancing, and jumping, turning around in circles with someone who does not practice what they look like. You standing here doing all and saying and singing and waving and throwing your arms and preaching and grabbing your head and throwing your leg up and God is looking at us as a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal, but all of us are dancing and shouting with it like we agree with it and God don't like it. So God's going to judge that. God's going to start judging us. He's going to get you when you're going home and say, why were you dancing and shouting when I was not even in that? Why were you endorsing what I frown on? See, God is tired of us doing stuff in antics. We can't do nothing until we get somebody's, you know, approval. We don't feel like we're moving forward. Now, listen, I don't blame you wholeheartedly for that because there have been some practices in leadership for hundreds of years that required that, especially in the black culture church. There are a lot of insecure people with a lot of gifts who have needed responses and will fuss you come on and give God praise standing there like you crazy come on give it I'm not crazy I'm confused as to why you think I can't discern what you are not I'm not stupid I'm staring at you trying to see why you think I'm stupid enough to endorse you you can you can fuss all you want to I'm not going to say amen to what the Lord is telling me you need to repent see that's why if I had a mic while church was going on I'm talking about some of these big conventions they shut it down right in the middle of service baby and I tell them listen we came to be edifying and you covered in flesh I can't feel no power I don't care how many horns they play I don't care how many organs they strike up I don't care how strong the drums are your spirit is ugly and I see some things that when you leave here God ain't in it and so I can't say amen I'm rebuking you you think I'm, I'm dancing with you I'm rebuking you and the open heaven is giving us passage to uncharted favor somebody say uncharted favor the kind of favor that has yet to be explored there is favor that had there is there is favor yet to be explored do not listen i don't want to talk to about five or ten of you quit counting yourself out saying that your time has passed that you feel like if you didn't do a certain thing in a certain era of your life that you are of no use the devil is a complete and utter liar and rebuke that voice what are you comparing yourself to why are you self-talking are you saying that because of your age get out of here do you know how long it takes uh, those of us who are serving this divine and holy God to mature into his likeness and maintain it on a daily basis there are several pe people who are younger than you who needs a you so quit counting yourself out tell the Lord yes on a continual basis and watch him flourish your life do you not understand that the, the stage and lights is not an indication that you're doing the right thing everybody's getting a side door to the stage now if you got a pretty good gift they'll let you do whatever but you know however and I'll leave that alone and so it is favor unknown to man tell somebody I'm walking in favor that is unknown to man. You cannot say this unless you expect to go through some hardships to get to that place. Say, I am walking in favor that is unknown to man. And may I in, in, in encourage you that when you have this kind of favor beckoning for you, you learn to accept that you are not average, that you are not common. There are some extraordinary things about you that must 
be explored. And here's the key word, alone. Some of you don't feel like you can get to God unless you got a witness the whole time. You got to call somebody. Can I tell you what God just said to me? Hush! He ain't spoke, he ain't spoke since 98. So, I mean, not like that. So why are you in a rush to get on the phone? This doesn't apply to everybody, but I'm going to talk to the ones that it applies to. Anybody that gets offended, then you ain't ready to grow, okay? Okay, so listen, listen. Quit running and quickly telling people what your ideas and your fulfillment, fulfilling dreams are and what God's going to do for you. Because it usually the praise of that moment seals whatever that season was. You just had your season. Hearing from God, calling, telling one person, now the season is done. Because that's not what God told you to do. Sometimes you just got to hold what God gave you. Why are you telling everybody right quickly? It has to grow. It has to mature. You want to hear more than when he just speaks. Even if you've been waiting a long time, there are instructions after you hear the voice of the Lord. He wants to give us instructions privately. Stephen Cozy wrote a book, talk about the seven habits of, of a successful person. He says, your private victories precede your public victories. Who you are in private should be so powerful. Yeah, who are you at midnight when your flesh acting a fool? Who are you when you get the urge in your flesh when you've had sex before and you're trying to keep your flesh up under? Who are you? You go into this GodUnderstands.com understanding. He does understand that you are willfully disobeying him and comfortable in your flesh and want to negotiate with him if he's not God, as if he doesn't have the power to keep you, if he doesn't have the power to uh, redirect your steps. I'm talking from experience. I'm talking about having to speak to your flesh, having to tell your flesh, don't call, I don't care if they called and told you that don't you pick up your phone and spread that don't bring that bone don't tell somebody what somebody else told you I just want to see if it's if it's true why for what that's carnality it's immaturity it is what tears churches up it is what keeps you out of the presence of God seeking after demonic stuff and running after it when God wants to temper you and and get you in a place where he can trust you some of y'all saying one day God is gonna open many doors honey there's been so many doors open for you you've closed them with your mouth there's been so many doors so many opportunities but while you were talking God was trying to talk but you talking you, you've got an agenda outside of God's agenda. And so just tell your neighbor, say, we need to be a little bit more quiet so we can hear the Lord's voice. Mm -hmm, so we can hear the Lord's voice. Okay, see, somebody said, shut up. I didn't. All right. And when you have this kind of favor, it's not common favor. The extraordinary things about somebody shout, I am extraordinary. Come on, I'm going to put it in your spirit today. Even those of you who have been downtrodden and you led other ministries, how many of you will be honest and say that you were part of other ministries and you felt like they really mishandled you? Go ahead and tell the truth. I mean, really, I know. It's far more than even you all who are lifting your hands. And may I just encourage your heart today, forget those things which are behind you and move forward. Do not put an expectation on your current leader to make up for all you think the last leader didn't do. It's not fair because the truth is you probably am not... Y'all can take this like you want. It's probably, if you're still uncomfortable in this ministry, you probably should have stayed where you were before you came here and probably the church before that. Because it's a possibility that it's not them. It's possibly you. And I'm not accusing you. But when you find God somewhere and you say, God told me to put my membership or to join forces or to attach myself to a ministry, you take on responsibility of that yes. You don't put that responsibility on anybody else. That means you'll hear God even in his so-called mistakes. When God has told you to do a thing, you hear God's voice throughout the entire tenure of it. You don't say, my, we love this one in the church. <laughs> God has said, my time is up here. We love that one. God, God has, he has, he has told me. <laughs> we be so kind. God has told me to move on to somewhere else. All right. Careful. Take no wooden nickels. You know, these, these days, people do that to see if you really prove you love them or wanted them or could use them, you know, it's so ridiculous. It's a waste of time. I'll come back and preach on that. But I need, I need a few of you uh, to just shout this out. I am, not common. I am not common. I am not a fly by night encounter. I am an experience. Talk back to me. Tell somebody for what God has done in me. Come on. Because of my yes, because of my yes. And, the and the Holy Ghost, approach me with caution. Me with caution. 
This is all I'm trying to say. Miss me with jealousy. Miss me with envy. Miss me with all of that. Because what you see is not even what you get. The stage of where I am is not even proof of where I'm headed. If you're jealous of me now, you might as well just quit. Because God's got so much in store. Somebody talk back to me if that's you. God's got so much in store for me that there's no way. If you can't handle me now, don't find me in six months. Because this prayer game I got, this obedience game that I got, this yes Lord that I have is going to baffle you. And some people say, oh, that's so fleshly. That's because you have no confidence. I talk with confidence. With the hell that I have gone through I talk with confidence that God is using me and it ain't a solo there is so much to me that you cannot afford to know me and have a jealous spirit I'll say it again there is so much you too I ain't just talking for me how many of y'all will witness that there's so much to me that you can't afford to know me and be jealous of me when you think I've reached my peak I'm just getting started somebody talk back to me it's a hard pass for me y'all as it pertains to insecurity. I don't do well around insecure people. Uh, you know, a lot of women, I don't have a lot of friends with women because I don't like the insecurity. Men, I get it. Y'all go through a lot of changes. I know because women can be so insecure. You know, they have one little hair strand out of the way and they need therapy. They, the dress didn't fit right and they need therapy. And that's the reason a lot of women are just not my friends. I hang out with a lot of men because they are strong and they're opposite of me and I like the contrast and conversation and that's just my preference. But sometimes a lot of women, they get in their feelings too fast. I don't, you know, what is it, honey? It's some more shoes like the ones I got on. I don't know about these, but I mean, do your best, you know. Anyway, I'm just getting started. It's a hard pass, y'all, as it pertains to insecurity because you know what insecurity says? Insecurity says not only do you struggle with your own God-given greatness, you're about to waste my time trying to get me to babysit your delayed yes. I said, not only is it that you struggle with your own God-given greatness, but you're about to try to get me to babysit your delayed yes. I cannot modify or stop my obedience to God to adjust myself to your disobedience. I thought you was my friend. A friend loveth at all times, but I don't have to tolerate your disobedience. I know I'm scared to be around people who are disobedient. You're going to make me miss God hanging out with you. With your delayed yes. You're too busy complaining about what the people didn't do. They didn't like my ministry at so and so's church. So I just went somewhere else. Quit talking about that. Grow up. If they didn't like it, figure out some kind of way why somebody didn't like it. Pray about it. Forgive them. Forgive yourself. Ask the Lord to show you yourself through his word. Grow so you can be an asset to the body of Christ. Am I talking good to anybody? The spiritual clock is ticking. That's why people like me, God has to trust to say the things that I say. Our spiritual clocks are ticking fast and we are in the hour of productivity. I must become less acquainted with inconsistencies and laziness. See, that's the mindset of the obedient. God, help me to not be lazy today. Help me to not be inconsistent. Help me to keep my word with you before I try to prove who I am to somebody. See, when you're walking in the isness of God. You don't need nobody to give you clarity about who you are. When you're in the isness of God, you don't need anybody to pat you on the back and say, you're doing a good job. Because it's draining to people who are on the move for God. It takes from their study time, their prayer time, their lifetime, their family time. When you always need an opinion about what you say you're doing for God. Why do you need an opinion about what you say you're doing for God? If it is as unto God, you don't need anybody's opinion. You are already content with that. I heard the voice of God. I'm obeying the voice of God. I'm doing what God says for me to do and I'm going to move in faith. Yeah. Not call and get on. Hey, how you what you think about this? Stop it. Stop it. And I say you got to get the counsel of two or three. Stop. Learn the scripture. Understand what that applies to. We are going through so many different changes delaying kingdom business because we have these old school religious antics waiting for some type of development to come out of it. But I believe in being kingdomized. Find out what the kingdom is really all about and get rid of religion, the habits of the old way of church. And can I say this to all of us and I include us. Did I say us? Baby in the glasses, you heard me say us, didn't I? So they ain't going to say I said them. 
Let me tell you something about us. We are so drawn to the dysfunctions in church, and a lot of us are drawn to it for one for many reasons. We love the people that are slow doing it, and we tolerate it. We are drawn to dysfunctions uh, in church because uh, sometimes, you know, we we glad that they're delayed because we ain't doing everything we're supposed to do. Let me tell the truth. And then, and then some of us like to hear the complaints because uh, it's just fun to hear. Our flesh likes to hear it so we can spread it. I'm talking about religious behavior. I'm talking about carnal behavior that is enmity to God. Can I tell you something as simple as getting on the phone and say, I didn't say this, but I heard God says you're my enemy. It's in that moment. When you pick up your phones or your tablets and you begin to type against people who come in the name of the Lord. Yes, I must come down this street. Even if you don't like what they said, but when you type it, that's your way of saying, I'm God's enemy. Let me get started. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, because it's carnal. It does not breed helpfulness. It does not say love. It does not say, you know what it really says? It says, I think so low of myself that this is the best I can do. is talk negatively about somebody whose name is being called. So if I get on the bandwagon of dogging them out, I am somebody. I think not. If you would focus on what God really made you to be and quit hating. Don't you know that people come to church just because they heard I'm going to speak so they can go back and say, and she did this and did that. It used to come a time, brother, I used to see phones up and I said, oh no, y'all put them down. Keep them up high. Turn the bright light on now. Yeah. Oh God, yes. Make sure you got the new version of whatever I iPhone, e-phone, earphone, Apple phone, jellyfish phone, whatever phone you need. Turn that thing on and you get a good angle, honey, because I mean everything I say, because it's coming from a place of purity and love and understanding. Who wakes up trying to offend the church? See how a lot of people need to grow up? We all are human. What y'all want us to be? Because we call the name of Jesus that we're not human? You got to, okay, you don't think we, we're not, you don't think we human because we ignore the stuff you say. You don't think I've come to church and won the roundhouse kick some people in the mouth. <laughs> I have before. I have wanted to do it. I even did it sometimes when I was younger. I did that. The Lord has brought me out. <laughs> James, I was a mess, you know. They say they talk about me, honey, I'd pull up. You know how to say pull up? I was born in 1972. Ain't no shade here. I mean what I say. You understand? I don't know nothing about no shade. What are we talking about a tree? What are we doing? But you talking about, oh, she's so shady. No, I'm intentional. You just don't like my words. And so, <laughs> and so we got to become less acquainted with inconsistencies and laziness because my heaven is open. Somebody shout, my heaven is open. And at this point of our lives, we have to only give valuable time to people who are ready to receive from God everything prayed and waited for that's been permitted by God. Anything else could jeopardize my harvest. Look at two or three people and say, please, please. do not jeopardize my harvest. I need y'all to find y'all's church friends and look on cross and look next to you wherever they are and say, please do not jeopardize my harvest. If you don't want to do it now, make sure you do it. Text them and tell them, don't jeopardize my harvest. I need, I've been waiting, I've been praying, I've been fasting. Now listen, those of you who are not living a holy life, you, don't, you shouldn't have that high of expectation. Now, I mean, calm down, really. I mean, you know, man, I don't know why God won't be good to me. Stop lying. You know why God won't be good to you. As much as you lie and keep up mess and you know. Come on, let's tell the truth. Let's, come on, let's be fair with God. Don't try to make God into some pseudo abracadabra magician. Let's not do that. The truth of the matter, he said, when your ways please me. Is it in there? Have you read it? He said, I'll give you, hallelujah, the desires of your heart. I will give it to you. But there's a prerequisite. Your ways got to please me. You can't come. Who comes to church, gathers information, leaves church, and becomes negative? That's somebody who is dealing with a spiritual sickness. That's a spiritual cancer. When you come to church for that, you got some low self-esteem issues. You got some critical mind issues going on because how dare you come into where a prophet is. The prophetic anointing is flowing that you're in the house of God where God's spirit is supposed to be and you dare be intentional about being negative and, and gathering information to be against. You don't like you. God, you don't like you because I ain't bothered. So, uh, y'all quiet. Y'all make me worried now. Don't make me worry. Y'all still quiet? Y'all still want to say amen? Oh, okay, I'm helping? Oh, okay. We all share in this great leader that is well equipped for king. Now, now hold on. 
Hold on, because it's going to be beyond claps. Thank you. Thank you. That was so nice. I might need them in a minute. But listen, we all share in this leader, in knowing him, knowing of him, that is well equipped for kingdom business. And, and he's an accomplished, equipped leader. And, and, and he's, he's capable. He's mature. But every accomplished and equipped leader needs capable, mature followers. That's what a clap was supposed to be, wasn't it? <laughs> every, every, every leader needs, they need capable, mature uh, followers. Those who come in the church door slowly, and I ain't been in church my whole life, and I'm just learning. Baby, learn from the people that are around you. That's why other people have joined the ministry besides you that's been here before you got here. Ask around in the congregation, excuse me, I am new here, and I just would like to know if you all would foster me so that I don't offend the church and I don't offend the pastor or his wife. Instead of you signing up, I'm going to go to the pastor's office. That's why there needs to be congregational care to say, hey, see me. If you have any issues about the church, talk with me. I, I I love the Lord. I will pray with you. I will keep your business to myself. Am I talking good yet? I know I am. And, and you say, so you won't think that my pastor or first lady doesn't like you. There are order. There's order. And there, there, are, there are some steps before you get into that area of needing our leader. But if I come to a church, I can't talk to the pastor. Well, you have issue already. So we're going to show you what counseling sessions are. Because you need a hug. That's what you need. Why y'all looking crazy? Y'all know it's the truth. You need a hug. If you think you cannot be helped by anybody but the pastor, then you should have looked them up on Facebook and try to be their friend personally. But you have a different agenda where you can't get help but from the pastor. You don't believe in the ministry. So you don't believe that everybody else has received of the Lord that belongs. There's something wrong with that. It's time to change. But those of us who are in leadership positions, who's always running to the back to make, Lord, I'm going to get on y'all in a minute. So notice that I did not say that accomplished and equipped leaders need anything. Hear me. I said that they appreciate it. That should help those of you who say, I know if I remove myself from this ministry, honey, they're going to they gonna have a problem. I want to say, any musician, I don't know any of y'all, I don't talk to the pastor, we're prophets. You know prophets, we don't talk details because we need to be clear when we come to church. I don't need nobody to give me a heads up about nothing. God tells me more than what I'll be willing to know. And so sometimes I be hearing stuff like I'm hearing right now. And I have to close my eyes because it ain't time for me to say it. And when I'm looking down, it's because I'm trying to delay God's voice with some things. And I'm just obeying him in a minute. And some of y'all might have to leave early. But we're going to try to do the best we can. Notice that I did not say that accomplished and equipped leaders need anything. I said they appreciate capable and mature followers of Christ to assist them with their yeses responsibilities because when there is a yes from obedient people of God you have responsibilities that's why church folk ought to be busy all the time the churches of the Lord all over the world are too empty for us to be not busy for the Lord. Musicians, there should be a conversation with other musicians locally and abroad. And don't just talk about getting together to gig. You ought to say, hey man, we had this conference. I just kind of want to put some people in mind for the next six months. Just in case the man or woman of God has something to do in ministry. And I want to see who these people are. I'll visit their churches and kind of look at their character. And see if these are people that I could recommend just in case I'm not able to be there. See, that's church business. That's being busy for the Lord. Making you a Rolodex of people who are in, in, in hospitality you look up look up how does Disney train their staff how does Neiman Marcus train their staff look up successful companies what is the training method of that y'all know Reverend likes to dress some of y'all who are so called close to him ought to be looking for sales at Neiman you know how he like to do it instead of being jealous I found something just your size I'm going to pull it to the side see that's when you, you care that's a part of his nature you should care about that because the other 98% He's asking God about something concerning you. But when you consider leadership, when you consider the body of Christ and the business of Christ, you make God your business every day. Even on your job, everything about your job says, God, what can I do to, to bless the house of God? What can I do? Not to prove any points. What can I do to make sure the woman of God is not offended by me? God, send, give me sensitivity. Tell me if I need to speak to her this Sunday or just give her a note. Uh, tell me, Lord, if I need to hug her or even if I need to wave at the kid. See, maturity. Help me how to be sensitive. God, help me not to be so needy when I come to church that I just got 
to have my hug. It was a woman. I was doing a, a workshop, and I was there for three days. The first day, James, she come up to me, I got to have my hug. <laughs> I said, okay, here you go. Boom. Got it. Second night, I got to have my hug. Okay, I'm a guest. All right, we're going to do this. And I was a bit, I ain't going to go there, man, Jesus. And so she came up, and she hugged me for the second night. And so she waited till the people around me speaking to me. Now the concert is happening. I'm greeting the people. And she said, she moved people out the way. Excuse me. I got to get my hug. And before I could even talk to her, she had, didn't even give me a chance to extend my arms or anything. She's holding me. And y'all don't laugh at me. You will anyway. I said, loose me. I did. I, I said, loose me, ma'am. I said, now hold on. I gave you a hug two nights. Some of y'all not going to, if you don't walk in my shoes, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge me because you don't know what that is. You don't know what that is to have to be pulled on by a thousand people before you get to her that needed a hug. But you just got to have your hug because you need to be seen. You really need some medication. That's what's wrong. We don't want to tell the truth. A lot of people come to church that need medication. I, I love us. I am church. I'm talking about me when I talk about church. We need medication and tell the truth. Hello, my name is Felicia. I know that I'm a new member here. In my past, I have had to have mental medication. I don't want to offend anyone. I'm here for my deliverance. And, and, and this is the medication that I take at times when I'm not well. With every other person, they do it. You'll have to put it in your paperwork. If you work for Exxon or any other company, they need to know when do you go off? How mental are you? What are you going to do to jeopardize our company because you're psychotic? But church is so sympathetic. You're going to do better next time. No! Baby, go get some counseling. Sit down. Be quiet. The Lord does love you. But I cannot allow you to interrupt the service because you're not well emotionally. Because you have a sickness. It is a dis-ease of your mind. So you need to get a hold of your medic. Do medication and prayer. Y'all okay? Why don't we like the truth at church? We're so sympathetic. We'll put up with everything. You're giving them a hand. Yeah, I'll give a hand. They're going to do better next time. Now you've disturbed the whole service because we don't have sense enough to say you're not ready yet. You have to edify the people of God. You shouldn't have to get up before the people and start a song and restart it five times. You're not edifying me because you were not prepared. The church is the only sympathetic place we do. Everybody should be able to come to church. Says who? Where's your rule book? Why is this rule book is not published in the, in the uh, 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 <laughs> Smithsonian? You know, where's this rule book that you have the way church ought to go? Because you want to be sympathetic because you are sensitive to the people. This is the house of God where there should be edification. Where we should be able to understand each other and live together in harmony and peace and not feel judged. But when you're honest and when you're fair, you give us an opportunity to entreat what you so call were hiding. Just tell the truth. I need to talk to the counseling department. I've had some issues in my past. I want to give you all my details. I, I, I'm not afraid of being judged. I know that I need the Lord help to break this off of me and I believe I'm going to walk in deliverance but here's the medication I'm on just in case y'all want to have some here at the church I'll bring it and I'm not even being funny I'm not really not and it sounds funny but it is the Holy Ghost truth a lot of people go to shouting and bucking and it's not the Holy Spirit it's not the Holy Spirit because it's not becoming it's a disturbance and anytime you bust your head and two or three people got to walk it that's a wild spirit that needs to be tamed by the Holy Spirit all right now I'm done and so notice that <laughs> And, I, and, 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 and when we follow close with capable, mature, and responsible people, they appreciate those of us who can be capable and mature followers of Christ first to assist them with their yeses responsibilities because most of our accomplishments were achieved by conquering our own demons. That's the other part y'all need to understand. By the time a person that is in, in uh, a high place in God that has reached a level of anointing that is, is very noticeable and that's not like the normal anointings that has the ability to hear, see, you know, the fivefold gifts and, and more and beyond, uh, we've already had to conquer our own demons just to get here. So we don't need people trying to work alongside of us who are not equipped. Because if I can't fight a demon and you close to me, I, why are you trying to help 
me. If, 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 if I'm here to fight demons and you haven't gotten rid of yours, why do you want to hold my towel? I don't need to be trying to recover you because you weren't ready to stand next to me. Why are you next to me? Why do you want to be here? Let's, let's just uncover that. Why? Listen, listen, listen. You are not in a hurry to serve anointed people. People that get in a hurry to serve anointed people, I, I check your motive. I got you. That ain't even how people who serve anointed people talk. I got you. I got you, prophet. You got, wait, just, all right. Thank you for your colloquialisms, but I need you to be able to minister to me. Even if you get my jacket, I need it to feel like ministry. I just felt like I just got through rebuking devils, casting out spirits. I just got through putting up with all this stuff. I'm wearing things. I'm sensing things. I'm giving you the word of God. I've studied. I've prayed. I've cried. I've dealt with a whole bunch of stuff. And now you're putting on my jacket like we buddies. What is your energy here? Why are you in my office and my wife is gone? Y'all not talking to me. Why are you standing outside waiting on me when I come out of here? What is your motive? How may I help you? Matter of fact, if you're a woman doing it, let me get one of the brothers to walk you out. And if you're a brother doing it, let me get another brother or another woman to help you out. Because what is your motive? Because people love to be around anointed people because we're attractive. The anointing of God is attractive. Everything we do, say, be, are is attractive. So it draws everything and everybody. But just because we don't embrace you doesn't mean it made you any less than who you believe you are. It's just that you're not ready for me. I hope so, my darling. I really do. And so... Uh, Our yes is the kind of yes that has required every part of our lives that we were trying to keep even for ourselves. I'm talking about prophets and leaders. How many of y'all have the prophetic gift and you know that by show of hands? Oh, I'm praying for you. I tell you the truth. We go through it, don't we? We hear it when we don't want to hear it. We endure it when we don't want to endure it. What were the other prophets? We have to smile when everybody else is sad. We have to keep our heads lifted. We have to hear God when it feels like he's nowhere nearby. We have to leave early when everybody is staying late. We've got to sit in the car even when we get home four hours after we've got through preaching we can't go to bed at the hotel even after we've been out of town we got to still cry and pray and get that spirit off of us that we cast it out of the woman that couldn't walk but she started walking and we laid hands on them and now we got to get rid of all of that why do you want to be our buddy it's going to make us have our ears open at all times and we're going to seem snappy and strange and weird because our humanness has taken, been taken over by the things of God. We can't be hum- human when you want us to be human. We're sitting in a divine place. We, why, I, I, just, I just said something funny. Why you didn't laugh, prophet? Because I'm sitting here meditating. There's a call I'm going to get in three hours that I must be prepared for. All right. I came here for the prophet, so I hope y'all get something too. And so, our yes is the kind of yes that has required every part of our lives that we were trying to keep for ourselves. So, when you run into the busybody complaining and immature, your yesness then begins to look to and for the whosoever will crew. Because evidently they get it because they so, the so-called my leader needs me mindset that never shows up on time for the hard stuff. But signs up for the where are we eating hour and when, when are we going to get more common program. Somebody shout we must be skilled. Must be skilled. Listen, in this next uh, go round for the man of God, uh, I hope the prophets are praying for me. We're the prayer warriors. See, some of y'all get bored with this kind of teaching because it's too detailed in your life. Some of y'all go to looking on your phone and playing games. Y'all don't want to hear this kind of teaching because you don't want to put that mess under arrest that you're comfortable with. Too many church people like the devils that they dance with and they don't want spiritual people to see through it. Y'all like y'all's devils. You like coming to church with them. You like being a hindrance because you like you. But God's uncovering you in the house of God. The Bible says judgment is going to begin at the house of God first judgment is hitting this house y'all don't see how many people dying y'all all all right I see them y'all know y'all see them too they're dropping they're leaving the earth because God is making room for people who have stood the test of time like myself they ain't got to like me but I'm still coming I'm still here anyway that's just me being me y'all all all right good somebody shout "We we must be skilled 
Proverbs 22, 29 says, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Here it is in the message Bible. Observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in demand and admired. They don't take a back seat to anyone. I told you about Stephen Cozy, the, the seven habits of highly effective people. And in this book, saints of God, he reveals truth that should make any believer who is conditioning themselves not to just be changed, but to help create great change, to help create shift in someone else's life. The way you know you've grown past one level to another is when you have a desire to help somebody else get there. The way you know you're still stuck in a place where you thought you grew out of is when you're still walking around with jealousy. You got to church about two minutes late and somebody else is conducting the service, but you were on program to conduct the service and now you're in your feelings and you think when you walk in, they're supposed to yield the mic to you. You were late! Talk back to me, church. You didn't get her on time. You, you, you had weeks to know about this. If you had hours to know about it, and now you show up two minutes late, the service of the Lord is going on without you, and now you can't get in the service because you don't have the mic. Something's wrong with you. If I was your pastor, I'd put you on probation for six months. You don't have no attitude coming to the house of God. You better come in dancing just as hard and loud as you would have when you had the mic. Some of y'all can't get free until you got the microphone in your hand. And then you sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. There's nothing coming out of it. Nobody's being redeemed. Nobody's being renewed. Nobody's being regenerated. Nobody feels like they're a part of the kingdom. But you want somebody to clap for you. That's called dysfunction. That's called immaturity. That's called inconsistencies in God's word. That calls, I'm proving that I don't have a prayer life. That's what that's called. And so, see, y'all made me get up. Let me sit back down. And so in this book, he reveals some truths that should make any of us uh, look about uh, how we condition ourselves to shift things. One of the things in this book that caught my attention, he said about our victories in our personal development. How many of you work on yourselves away from the church? Tell the truth. How many of you really, when you go home, Lord, did I do that right? Father, when it, you know, that you wake up, Father, did I say that right? Is there anybody that I offended that I need to say I'm sorry to? Father, in the name of Jesus, please condition my heart. Don't let me be so caught up in myself that I ignored if I hurt somebody Lord disturb my spirit if I didn't do right God please temper my attitude change me oh God God show me who I need to say I'm sorry to help me to go to them first Lord let me find their telephone number in the, you know, that's when you really want to please God when you want to please God you're not at peace with hurting people you're not at peace with offending people you're not at peace when you don't support other people you know this baby that was standing there when y'all was clapping slightly he called my name tell me your name my love elder uh huh Huh? Oh Lord, your face says Grundy. What's wrong with me? And so my friend, that's his son. Grundy was up and he was talking and he says, Come on, give Pastor Kimberell. And it was light claps. And he went into, Oh, come on, come on. You know, I almost wanted to tell you, baby, don't even say nothing else. They don't mean no harm and I don't hear it. I'm good. I don't need nobody to clap for me. I God claps for me. All of heaven claps for me. I don't have to hear hand claps in flesh. When I obey God, I hear heaven a resounding sound. That's why, listen, I don't need to hear anybody approve. My mother used to say, you quit smiling in the face of people that everybody just say, oh, you did a good job. She said, consider the source. Everybody that's telling you that you're doing a great job, consider who they are first. Because if somebody that's demon possessed is telling you you're doing a great job, you need to check your job. Yeah, I ain't it good. So I began to recall the somewhat obvious, needy, desperate, impatient characteristics that some of us have when it comes to desiring public recognition, whether it be out of front or assisting the out front. We have a desire for public recognition. For what? If you're not consistent with pleasing God in private, why do you want public recognition? If that's you prowling in the streets and you dialed up in Hollywood Boulevard when you need to be on your face praying, why do you want somebody to clap for you? Stop this. Stop trying to put a demand on praise from me when, when you should have been giving praise to God, you somewhere being dirty. And you, ay, ay, ay. So, so, so. No, no, no. Judgment is at the house of God. Enough is enough. Somebody shout, enough is enough. We have put up with so much until we have made sin comfortable in the house of the Lord until no, nobody want to tell no truth no more they're afraid to put you out on the thing on the jig on the social media god's gonna do something with the social media god is exposing all that needs to be exposed
foes. That's why everybody that is living a life for Christ begin to tell the truth or he's going to shame you. Tell the truth, be the truth, act the truth, know the truth. He said, you shall know it. Talk back to me. And the truth shall what? Make you. Somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free. So I began to recall all of this stuff. People needing public recognition and trying to help the out front. And I was led to Proverbs 16 and 2 where it reads, all of a man's ways seem innocent to him. But motives, somebody shout motives. Motives are weighed by the Lord. Some of y'all, I'm going to just speak for first lady and she beat me up and she wants. But I'm going to speak for her. She and I have never had a conversation. This old school. This is how they used to do it. Have we ever talked? See that? As I, <laughs> they say, <laughs> I love us. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh, God. Even some of them guys, they were a little off, but you know, it was fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? They stand at them. Have we ever talked, woman of God? Have we ever seen each other, woman of God? Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then they turn their back to him. Have I ever called you, woman of God? <laughs> To prove it, but I understand some of those antics, some of them had to go through, and because so many doubters sitting right in the house of God, study what the fivefold ministry is, study about the preacher, the teacher, the prophet, study, and you'll understand it better when you come to the house of God and not be so judgmental. I don't know why some of us who have not walked a day in the shoes of those who operated the fivefold ministry that we're so judgmental. Who makes you qualified to judge what they are doing or not doing? And so, first Samuel. Uh, chapter 16, Saul is still on the throne and Samuel anoints David and Israel's next king as Israel's next king. Young David conquers Goliath, establishes friendship with Jonathan, y'all know it, and begins his escape route away from Saul's jealous homicidal uh, attempts. Then Samuel then hears from God concerning David but becomes weary because of how things seemed to look. That's why y'all cannot sit next to people who doubt themselves. If you're really trying to do something for the Lord, you're going to have to tell those people who talk negatively and talk down and don't believe in themselves. You're going to say, listen, cheer up my sister, cheer up my brother. I'm really striving to hear from the Lord and I love you so much that I care about you. But every time we talk, you're so negative and it's always opposite of what God wants. And I don't want to hurt our friendship and I'm doing my best to try not to break up our conversation but I want to hear from God and every time I talk to you you bring me down y'all we gotta be you gotta protect your spirit you gotta protect your gift because the enemy is going to try to block you from entering into a season at a certain amount of time and a certain at the right time and you'll be still trying to babysit people who are not ready and so he tells God how can I do what you're asking of me when things look like they're already in place and God says don't consider his appearance or his how he's, he's talking to David for I have rejected him. May I remind you people of God that man looks where? Well on the outward appearance, but God is what? Y'all sure y'all know that? He is looking at the heart of the matter. Verse 7 says, Jesse paraded Abinadab and Shammai in front of Samuel. But each time God said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse brought four more sons forward, but none of them were chosen either. The problem is, is that Samuel is relying on his human sense of vision, which will never suffice for the work of our God. Listen, if you are chasing after leadership to sanction your undeveloped gift, It is unfair to keep trying to remind who's in leadership of how great you are. It's unfair. It is tiring. When you are what God requires, your leader will be calling for you. You won't have to be trying to call your leader to see if they see who you are. They'll be reaching for you because it's a help to them. Samuel had even referred to himself as a seer. But as 1 Samuel 16, 3 emphasizes, Samuel's job was not, to, not so much as to see as it was to just listen. Remember, you shall anoint for me the one whom I... I name to you when 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 pastor is choosing if that's the case if he's choosing depending on conferences or whatever to do whatever just because you did the last three and he didn't ask you to do it are you really in your feelings let me talk real to some of you just because he didn't want you to park the cause this conference you got a problem just because he don't want you to serve in hospitality this particular conference now there's an issue now you're asking around did I offend did I do anything? Who you asking? That's what starts mess. Oh, I'm in the house. Let me do, let me do I'm in the house kind of dance. I'm in the house. Don't give me no music. Okay, thank you. 
The message is rather clear. When dealing with matters of God's actions and God's, when you trust the man of God to give you a word, why can't you trust him to tell you he don't need you this conference? Now you can stand there, speak Holy Ghost when they come in the, <laughs> talking in your life and telling what thus said the Lord. But the moment that they tell you without warning, it's not needed, this conference and I'll get back with you, you have issue. See, now I check you. I got to check your motive now. See, the mature saint says, no problem, Pastor. If you need me, I'm around. Whatever you need. Thank God for all the years I've served. I'll be right here if you change your mind. Thank you, Pastor. That's a good attitude. The reason I call First Lady is because there are things that she senses that she cannot say. And when she gets quiet and her countenance changes, some of you women ought to be looking at her countenance instead of trying to compare it to yours. Made me straighten my dress up. She lives with the voice. She serves the voice of the house. She's his wife. She's his oneness. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you feel. But when her countenance changes and she gets quiet, she's in protection mode. She got to watch on the wall. She got to see. Because she got to know what to deal with when she goes home. So y'all watch how y'all watch her. See, that's how. The message, y'all see that smile she gave me say, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, sir. And so, why are you trying to crank me? I'm not going there. As I'm singing tonight. I'm almost done. So the Apostle Paul, God provides us with a paradigm shift in our thinking. And in terms of our thinking, Paul says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will, Romans 12 and 2. I love that one. Eugene Peterson put it in a message Bible like this. He just got messy with it, but I like it. He says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Isn't that good? That's the message Bible. Romans 12 and 2. Go back and read it for yourself. See if your message Bible says it too. He says, don't become so well adjusted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Somebody say inside out. See, I don't want you out unless your inside has been visited. I don't need your out performance unless your inward man has been visited by God. If you don't know how to turn your plate over, I had to get sick. So I'm like, oh, Kim, I lost so much weight. I went through hell because disobedience was my common thing to do. I travel a lot. I eat late. I got to the rehearsal late. I hadn't eaten all day. We know how this life goes. I had a rehearsal. I had a workshop. And I had to do this. Didn't get to my room till midnight. Well, God got you there in time to pray. Maybe you needed to fast all day. Grundy, welcome back. You better learn how to like this talk. God got good use for you. Peterson interprets it in the Bible. says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Some of us just won't turn the knob kind of church. That we just own a, that's not how it works in a prophetic atmosphere. God will shift everything. The man of God might stand up and say, let's sing hallelujah and then leave. See, the spiritual will get it. You'll go off. You've been singing hallelujah and can't make it past the second verse. When you're tapped into it. No pun intended. We are number one, though. Okay, y'all get that later. <laughs> Tap into it. And so you'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize. People have gotten, I'm almost done. Readily recognize what he wants from you. And quickly respond to it. Somebody just step out on faith and say, God, help me to recognize. Quickly. What you want me to respond to. Can I tell you people of God. Unlike the culture around you and myself. Always dragging us down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of us. Develops well informed maturity in you. That's still Romans 12 verse 2. In terms of our behavior Paul says. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. Are being transformed into his likeness. With ever increasing glory. Meaning the believer should come to this house every week and it should go higher and higher every week midweek service ought to be off the chain 
It ought to beat the hype of Sunday. Because this is supposed to be an everyday affair. I'm going to preach this gospel till the day I die. People don't like truth. That's why they're always trying to ridicule me. But I was raised on truth. They didn't let you operate in the house of God unless you were skilled and you said, yes, Lord. They didn't care how young you were. I was seven years old. And a woman had a, uh, had a uh, uh, what is it? When do you beat? What is it? A washboard, honey, and she had a broken spoon, and she used to keep that broken spoon, and she would play it. And, and I went to the altar one night; I was about seven or eight, and that lady treated me like I was thirty-five years old. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. <laughs> but but I didn't realize the anointing that I would have to walk in when I got older. That I have to be bold and brave and tell the world, I don't care how you don't like it. I got to say what God told me to say. So at the time, she in my face with a washboard. Tell him yes, Lord. Chicka chicka chicka. Clap your hands and give him a yes, Lord. Chicka chicka chicka. Name Sister Cooper, Sister Joan Cooper. She's still alive to this day. <laughs> oh, listen, it did not traumatize me because it was our culture. And I knew they wanted the best for us because that was the same Sister Cooper that used to bring us a bag of candy. So when Sister Cooper met me at that altar, if I wasn't going to say yes, Lord, but for nothing but that candy, I was going to give him a yeah. <laughs> she had good candy. It wasn't that old used Halloween old candy, it was fresh. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give up my hospital bill. I don't hell I've been through. So in terms of our behavior, people of God, listen, Paul says, and we with, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. Turn around and say, you should. Come on. We should reflect the Lord's glory. It says when we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from him who is the spirit. Thank God for the power of transformation. There are times when I need to let some people know that they are spending too much unnecessary time watching the current me. You know, don't mark time with people who want you to stay like you are. I don't like this thing to stay just how you are. And I know how it means, what it means. But for a person who is trying to increase in their faith and, and, and walking out of religion, can I just tell you all this? Religion is a dangerous thing. Uh, kingdom is the only way to be because religious habits will cause you to to function in dysfunction comfortably. And so uh, the current me getting too much attention when God is only unveiling my first level and I'm only in my preliminary phases. It goes to show you how disconnected some of these so-called spiritual people are. Their high-mindedness and hidden impatience with themselves is trying to rush you or me into being something that they wish they could be. There are some people who will push you, oh, you're doing a good job. And y'all watch that. That's why I say you got to consider the source. When you know how many of y'all believe you really do know yourselves you know you you know the good the bad the ugly the good you know all of that come on you don't need anybody to give you any of that unless some God is using someone who is qualified spiritually to give you more insight but when you know who you are as an individual you don't need all of that push quit wanting that you got to have an inner wellness you got to have an inner peace that says father uh, uh, let your will be done in my life I don't need to get a second guess from anyone father show me what your will is and so the Lord is up to something in incredible in all of our lives he's speaking his word he's speaking his truth he's trying to get something particularly to you the lord sent me here to tell those of you the shirt wearers the the consortium all of you are members of this church can i share something with you there's an anointing on this leader that will probably have him away from you all for quite some time in the near future i'm having to say it as a prophet of the lord because there is anointing that rests on him that has been normally especially in this in this hour hated and reject it because you all know he's a very uh, exact prophet and you all know when he speaks what God says he just says what God says and he has been kind about it way too long and God's going to burst him out of even where he is there are some things he's going to be burst into the kingdom of God in such a way because the Lord has given me one word my, my babies he's given me one word for the prophet he's needed See, see, some of us can't be released until we are needed. That's why you got to get comfortable with being quiet and being okay with who you are. I don't, I'm just anointed. I don't know why God won't give me a platform. Your platform is when you climb out the bed. Yes. Everywhere you go, wash your terrier is your platform. The grocery store is your platform. Your driveway is your platform. Everywhere you go is your platform. You don't need stage lights and camera because the truth of the matter is the light illuminates who you are. And some of us still got some things that didn't need to be seen yet. Tell the truth. 
Tell the truth. And so God's getting ready to do it, man of God, if I'm allowed to just speak about your future to you in front of the people of God who serve you. You have been so faithful to the Lord in, in private. The Lord has blessed you. I know we haven't known each other as closely as a lot of other people do, maybe going on two years, but it feels as if we've known each other 25 years because we love the same God, almost in the same way. I've got a few more years to catch up with you with the time that you spend in the presence of God, but there are some things that are about to take over your life in such a way that's going to separate you from what has been done, what has been seen. And I'm praying that the atmosphere of this church will begin to understand that they've got to hold on to what they have seen, that maturity will set in, that they will not be like invalids just because you are no longer around as much anymore. The Lord's going to do it to free you, hallelujah, from having to be pulled on so much locally. There are so many people locally who don't really want to embrace who you are in God, but there are some people who are out on the outskirts of the world. I literally saw today a sea of people. He was dressed in white. The man of God was dressed in white with loose clothing and he was standing in front of a sea of people and when he lifted his hands he began to pray and healing started taking place. What has seemed hard, God's going to release you into a land of easy where you knew it was supposed to be, where people will be receptive to the voice of God immediately. They will not put up a wall of defense to keep from being exposed by the word of the Lord. But God's going to put you in a rhythm, in a place, in places, in places, in places where it's just going to be easy that you're going to want to come home just to get a break. And so Father, I praise you for this man of God. I thank you for every door that is swinging wide open because of his obedience. I thank you for sustaining power. And now I thank you for the amount of money that is a connect to it. I thank you for millions. Somebody pull it down in the spirit. Don't be carnal. Pull it down in the spirit. I thank you for millions. I thank you for millions of dollars to do the work of the Lord to set up schools and churches all over this land. Hey, thank you dear Lord. Thank you for preparing his mind and his heart for it. I thank you for keeping his body healthy in the name of Jesus. There'll be no COVID. I block it by the power of God. There'll be no illnesses that will hinder the man of God. And now Lord, I break ties as his sister. I break ties. I cut ties to anything and any people that can be distractions because his heart has not learned how to tell them no. I break it. I cause them to fall off. I break it. In the precious name of Jesus, I come against it. I sever the neck of the serpent that comes to hinder him. In the name of Jesus Christ, every pseudo relationship, every made up fake relationship that wants to swarm around him and call him dad when they don't even know how to be a good child. I break the relationship. Every secret door, every perverted spirit that wants to come from the side door, I bind it in Jesus' name. I curse it at the root by the power of God. Now I send angels to protect for him and I send Michael to fight for him in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, Michael, fight. Somebody say it like this. Say, fight, Michael, fight. Come on, we're sending Michael, the angel Michael, to fight for the man of God because he's going to be confronted with so many people. Uh oh, I have to say it like God said, demons in the name of so called big names who don't want to see him coming. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. People that rather call him friend than prophet, people that rather laugh with him than say, Yes, Lord. I break relationships that it'll come easy by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now cover him. Cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Cause him to do what only you can do through him. Hey, I need who is his who is his adjutant? Who does he trust? Who is it? Who come quickly, will you please? I need his feet to be touched. If you will, sit as close as you can. Is there a man who serves him? Closely, who are you quickly? Are they here? All of y'all? Okay, well, I need a man. You, I want you. I want you to just touch his feet. Ah, yeah, so I see. Go stand behind his chair, my darling. Stand behind him, man of God. Oh, I see, I sure I see. Ha, 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 
Mm, mm, mm. We cast down all these high-minded people who want to put him in a box. Hey, we cast it down. We call them and render them powerless in the name of Jesus. This man of God will have to save churches. I know what I hear the Lord say. He'll have to walk into congregations and save churches, salvage them. Hey, bless him and anoint him to do it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I praise you, dear God. He'll cause forgiveness to come back to houses of God all over the world. Forgiveness. Somebody shall do it, Lord. And Father, we give you praise and glory. Keep this house intact. I need the members to begin to walk around. Just walk around and say, keep our house intact. Keep our house intact, oh God. Cover us by the blood of Jesus. Let no one come in trying to pastor us. Help us to remember the things that the prophet has already spoken. Help us to be consistent. Help us to keep the glory of you in this house. Help us to be anointed. Help us to say what only you say, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say, help me not to hinder this place. Come on, say, help me not to hinder this house in the name of Jesus. Help me to be the type of congregant that brings peace to his mind in the name name of Jesus. Somebody begin to clap your hands and say it is so. Oh, I need y'all to say it like you have an understanding. It is so. It is so. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon. Hey, hey. No weapon. I said no weapon. I need y'all to clap and shout no weapon. Come on. No weapon formed. No weapon formed. No weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rise against him in judgment you say thou shalt condemn thank you lord thank you lord thank you for peace to do this work and it is so by faith come on let's clap our hands and give the lord the praise what a mighty god we serve let me hear a flat what a mighty god we serve i said what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve he's a glorious and wonderful god come on hallelujah what a mighty god we serve what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, yes. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we, we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. We serve angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Ah, what a mighty God we serve. I hear you, Lord. Yes, y'all know that one. Come on, yes, hey, yes, everywhere his feet shall tread. Yes, everywhere his feet shall tread. Yes, yes. Everywhere he goes, I want them to hear that sound. Yes. When he walks in a building. Yes. 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 I need every preacher that serves to stand now. I need all the men of God of this church to stand and just look at me. All the brothers, if y'all are here, just lift your hands. I want to pray over you that the Lord would give you strength and peace and cover you. Ooh. Just begin to tell him, say, trust me again, God. Come on, brothers, tell him, trust me again, Lord. Say, trust me with your work. Trust me, God. Come on, brothers, I need to hear you say, trust me, God. Trust me with your work. I'm going to speak to some of you that have, and it's not a bad thing, but I'm going to call it an agenda. It's not negative. Some of you have needs, sometimes a bit too weighty. You're not doing the work. You're going to have to do the work and then get past it to sanction it. Do the personal work and then get, the Lord will use him to bless it. But there is no possible way that you can think that you're not time for you to be equipped, well equipped. You hear the Lord say, study. Study his word, brothers. Study it. Study it so he'll know that even when his wife cannot go, that she's in great care. Study the word of the Lord. That when he sees you, every time he comes back, when he sees you, he has more and more confidence that you're in God. 
It'll give him peace. It'll let him know that his work is not in vain. These women here, are you all prayer warriors for this ministry? Who, okay, I sense it. Stay in prayer. Cover this place. Hear the Lord. Put that oil on your hand like the old school and anoint. Wave your hands. Trust God again. Stay off the phone with negative family members who have not believed in you. Don't practice and rehearse words of the past. That has caused you to doubt yourself because they choose to doubt you. Calling you weird and holy roller and all of that. You ain't got what you think. But they, that, that, all that negativity, I curse that in the name of Jesus. And let it fall to the ground and never live again in the name of the Lord. Singers of the church, I know my son who's here. Y'all wave your hand at me. Listen to me. When God sends minstrels like this man of God. Ah. The sensitivity to God, your willingness to jump up, it touched me. Stay in that place. Be willing to learn and embrace what God has to say. Hear what the Lord has to say. Be willing to learn like you're at Berkeley School of Music. It's the house of God. Embrace ministry like it's your last opportunity. Say, God, use me. I don't, even if it's the wrong note, correct me. Help me. Help me to hear it. I, I don't want to move ahead of myself. I'm humble enough to know if I'm in the wrong, somebody's here to help me and correct me. Lord, bless my life. I want to be a blessing. And the Lord will do it. He'll take you beyond the four walls. For all you know, the Lord is setting the man of God up to be able to let y'all travel with him. Y'all better hear a word. Ain't no more R.W. Shambox. Ain't no more. Demi Swagger is old in his day now. These other guys have gone on, but the work must continue. God is trusting people who have put up with so much and have kept quiet. Don't you understand that this man of God knows everything we know about everybody that we know stuff about, but he knows it in depth, but he has closed his mouth. He has not ruined the lives that he really could have just based on information. I'm not saying it because he shared it with me. I'm talking about it because of what the Lord is saying, but because of his ability to just hold it. And say, Lord, help him. His ability to just say, Lord, I don't want to hurt nobody. God is saying, I'm going to show you what it meant to me. And he's going to bless his life. Let's clap our hands and thank the Lord. I honor the Lord so much for this opportunity. We must go and all of us try to get a little rest before coming back. How many of y'all are going to come back tonight? I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm looking forward to hearing what the Lord has to say. And singing what the Lord would give me to sing. I do want you all to sow a seed into this word, I, honestly. Only those who will stand quickly with a $50 seed. I'm going to, uh, let me ask you, yes, $50 seed quickly. Thank you, my darling. I don't know what it is about you I like so much, but I really do. I think it's your heart. It's your heart. I really like you. I don't know, have we met? I really like you. I like you because you know the voice of God. And not only do you know the voice of God, you've been brave enough to hear his voice and exit out of moments that you knew it wasn't him. God likes that about you. If you dare to do everything God says, 2024 will change your life for the rest of your life. Hear me? There are some people that you call friend, you know they're not. You know they're not. They're users. Because they know your heart is good. And in the past, you've had to, let's say it like this. In the past, you've chosen to respond to certain people because you felt like you just had to. Even friend, family. Mm. But don't call anybody friend who don't prove them, their friendship to you first. Not this year. Not this year. If they cannot overprove why they are your true friend, give yourself a break. Don't give what's holy to dogs. Don't you work hard and then give it away to people who don't want to work. Don't enable people who don't want to work. And so, Father, I bless this young man. I pray for his going and his coming. I ask for a hedge of protection around his heart. Keep him in the center of your will. Love him like only you can. Show him what real, true love is, God. In you, over in the holiness of you, show him, Lord. Let him feel your presence. Even over the next three days. Okay. The next three months. He, he going to deal with you. You may wake up. You may go to crying. That's the Holy Spirit. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing weird about you. Ain't nobody about to die. And you about to get a sign. That's the Holy Ghost. Weeding out some things to give you rest. To give you peace. I call for peace. I need the church to help me just say peace. peace. 
in the name of Jesus. And it is so by faith. Amen. Those of you who are standing.